What's the worst thing you've ever heard a teacher say at school? Story one. When I was about nine, our teacher asked the class what we wanted to be when we grew up. One kid said he wanted to be a bin man, a garbage man for us. The teacher went into a rant saying that jobs like these were for the lowest, most unintelligent people in society and that he should aspire to be better than that. Finally, she asked why he wanted to be a bin man anyway. Because my dad's one, the kid said. By now, he was in tears. Judging anyone for their career, which is undoubtedly not only helpful to society but necessary to society, is just gross behavior. From a teacher, no less. Story two. Two age of nine, lost my father in a horrific accident. I returned to school a few days later, and after attendance was taken, the teacher said to me in front of the class, The class got together and sent flowers to your father's funeral. I paid your shares, so make sure you bring in $2 tomorrow, as I need to be paid back. He then went on with the lessons, as many have asked what happened. I asked to see the school nurse and was sent home. Once home, I told my mother. Returning to school two days later, I never saw the teacher again. I don't know how my mother handled it. Story three. This wasn't said directly to me, but in middle school, I had a teacher grab me from the lunch table and drag me to the principal's office. After grilling me for a while and telling me I know what I did, they finally revealed to me that the teacher stated she witnessed me suggestively sucking my thumb while staring at a female friend of mine. I was biting my nail, story four. One day in a history class, my professor, who was at least 80 years old, was talking about bedfellows in Victorian England and saying how common it was for men to sleep together. He used himself as an example and said he used to sleep with his grandfather all the time as a child. After he said that, though, he looked at the ground and said to himself, audibly, I still wonder to this day if he assaulted me. Then he looked back at us, shrugged, and said, oh, well, too late to know for sure now. It was fascinating to see someone overcome deep-seated trauma so quickly. Story five. One of my college professors straight up said one day, from my experience, African-American students tend to drop my class the most. It's probably too hard for them. Any of you notice how we haven't seen that one black chick who used to sit in the front row for weeks now? Guy was immediately shot down when the, quote, black chick raised her hand from the back row saying she'd been here the whole time. She just moved to the back where her boyfriend was. Story six. Congratulations, your marriage of Dumbo's made in heaven. I had to teach her in elementary school who, after every test, would pick the lowest scoring girl and lowest scoring boy and force them to hold hands. Perform a brief marriage ceremony on them in front of the laughing class without the kissing part, obviously. And have all the other kids sing, and here comes the bride. Then she would have the two kids sit together at the side of the classroom for the rest of the lesson. And they weren't allowed to stop holding hands until the bell rang. And yes, this did happen to me. Three weeks was about how long the teasing lasted, and six years was roughly how long me and the groom avoided speaking to each other after that, out of our residual humiliation. Edit. This was around the early 2000s. I'm not from the U.S., and I didn't tell my parents. I honestly didn't think it was such a huge deal. Kids get punished all the time, right? I'm from a culture where teachers are considered authority figures to be respected. So no adult would have defended us unless I was being physically hurt or something, probably. I'm surprised so many of you are outraged on my behalf, your sweethearts. I'm not permanently scarred by this, just kind of salty. Can't speak for the other kids, though. But after a day's worth of angry crying, nobody seemed overly traumatized. Most important edit. Did it work? Were you a better student from then on? Did you studiously avoid getting the lowest grade in class? No. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing confessions community so you can support the channel. Story seven, not the worst ever, but it really screwed with me. There are literally millions of other cute little Chinese girls just like you that are much better than you and can replace you. For context, I study animation and am also Chinese. I was asking my teachers for advice on how to get better at drawing faster as I wasn't very happy with my skill level and was stressed about being left behind by my peers. Most of my teachers were very supportive, but obviously not all of them. I did work very hard to spite her though and did get a scholarship from it. You just can't break my spirit. I go to school in the US and it happened to be a white teacher, but there are mean people from every race and gender. 
and good people say crappy things sometimes, too. Story 8. I just wish I was freaking dead. Overheard by complete chance while wandering the corridors during a free period. Turned right back around and took the long road so I wouldn't have to walk past the classroom. It was a bit of a broken pedestal moment for me, but I never told anyone else about it. The teacher who said it was one of our most beloved history teachers, who we later found out had been stopped from taking their own life at least twice by one of the deputy heads, who'd been friends with him since their university days. Not stopped as in talk things out and convinced him it wasn't the best way to deal with his problems, but as in physically picked up and dragged away from a window. He, the deputy head, was quite intimidating as a teacher, and, and we gained a lot of respect for him after learning that, story nine. When I was in high school, a gym teacher came up to me one day towards the end of class, of class when everyone was just kind of freely shooting basketballs and hanging out on bleachers. I was standing by myself, and he walked up and asked me something about the neighboring town. He said, did you know that in Olney, they used to hang in words with velvet, and then just walked away? It was the only time he ever talked to me. I'm white, and he was a black guy, maybe 6'8", I think he was in the NBA for one season or something. Everyone loved him, so I guess he was just messing with me, but he got me pretty good. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Story 10. First day on the job. Teacher walks in as the new CAD teacher, and his name's on the board. Oh, and it's Mahalar. It looks like you'd pronounce it as, but man, he announces right away that it's not, and you'll be thrown out of his class if you call him that. He does roll, and gets to a French-African name that looks like it might be pronounced for a gay slur starting with F, does not use better judgment, and says that slur is a last name. The kid just said, it's pronounced Faje Butman. Kid obviously had to deal with this problem his whole life and was not keen on the mix-up. New teacher blows up and is hollering at the 16-year-old who's not backing down. Takes a bit, but they both disappear. Teacher never seen in the building again. This was first period, first day of school. Story 11. Okay, I have one. When I was in elementary, I got confused at lunchtime and threw my food out early and wandered outside for recess alone. Realizing my mistake and having no idea what to do, I went back inside and told that the lunch lady and asked what I should do. She dragged me by the arm to the center of the lunchroom with a live mic and informed everyone of my mistake and how no one should do what I did because it was a bad, bad thing. She told everyone I was going to be expelled. I was sobbing at that point. I kept asking her what expelled meant, but she didn't answer me. All I knew was that it was a bad thing. I never told my mom until years later. And no, I didn't actually get expelled. Story 12. My high school gov teacher told me I was faking an autoimmune illness and that I would never make it anywhere with my laziness. She was trash. I'm now nearly finished with my bachelor's in biology and headed to med school next year after surgery. Suck it, Mrs. Norris. Story 13. How dare you write that? You're practically emotionally handicapped. It's psychopathic. Said to me at 12, not even half a year after my mom died. She made us write an essay about our home life, which in retrospect was a screwed up excuse to snoop into my situation and didn't like how I used humor to cope. So she pulled me out of the class to yell at me for five minutes for not being sad enough. I don't even remember what I wrote besides cracking some jokes about my dad's outfits. Story 14. Mrs. Noodle, my third grade math teacher. 1987. I missed two weeks of school due to a horrible case of chicken pox and fell behind with whatever it was we were working on. A month after I came back to school, I was still struggling with math, but was too young and scared to ask for help. We had a test and I failed. So Mrs. Freaking Noodle brought my third grade self up to the front of the classroom and shamed me. She told the entire classroom, I will never succeed in math. I ended up crying and going to the nurse with a, quote, stomachache. I'll never forget how awful she was to me, and I struggled with math for the rest of my time that I was in school. I feel like for some reason there are some people who just have this idea that shaming people will get them to do the inverse. Instead, it can really just become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell someone they suck at something enough, they will eventually just believe you. They'll stop trying. And while not true in every case, in a large amount of them it is. Enough so that we shouldn't be doing the whole shaming thing, really. Story 15. A teacher told the story of when he was working at a girl's summer camp. The showers had broken down and he had to go fix it for the girls who were mid-shower. 
They had the girls put their faces to the walls for some reason, and he described it as naked bums all along the walls. He told it as if it were a funny anecdote. I was creeped the hell out, and can't imagine how the girls who were going to said camp felt about the story. Story 16. Paraphrasing slightly, but there's no such thing as Asperger's syndrome. This is just attention-seeking behavior. Said to me about me. Admittedly, this was over 20 years ago when not everybody had heard of it, but still. I'd had two days of tests and brain scans resulting in a long-form diagnosis slash explanation, which my parents had shared with my teachers. Every other teacher basically reacted with, oh, that's why he's so weird. <laughs> okay, we can work with this, but not this guy. Screw you, Mr. M, story 17. Man, that girl has some jacked up teeth. He said it about one of my friends who had cancer and had half of her jaw removed. I told the principal, the teacher admitted it, and then I got kicked out of school. Story 18. Not the worst thing ever, but definitely the worst advice. In high school, there was a subject that I really, really liked. It was called Informatics 2, but it was mostly basics of graphic design and creative digital stuff in general. I was really inspired for a project we had to do and really excelled in it. Made a green screen at home, did some advanced video editing. It was through the roof. The professor, Mr. V, who was in charge of that subject, loved it. Gave me an A, showed it to other groups of students as well. Later, I was told he would show that video presentation to future students as an example of a well-done project. The other professor, Miss M, who taught the same subject, but not to my group, met me a few days later in the hall and told me, I saw what you did for Professor V's class. Congratulations, it's very good, but you shouldn't have done it. Why? You've raised the bar for everyone else. So somebody who could have gotten an A now would get a B or less. I actually took it as it is, and it kind of screwed me up for a while. Wish I could go back in time and tell her to screw off. I'm not in charge of grading, and I've got the right to excel as much as I want. There was no grading on a curve in high school, so there was really no need for her to have that attitude. She was probably thinking, I raised the bar in a way that Professor V would now expect more from other students or something. To be honest, I wasn't thinking about all that in advance. It was maybe the only class I really enjoyed that semester. I just wanted to have fun. Story 19. In UK year 11, age 15 16, English literature, a teacher once told my class, polar bears almost exclusively eat penguins. I wasn't good at literature, but I was good at science subjects, and I wasn't this teacher's favorite pupil. So when she said this, I quite quickly argued back, saying she was wrong. She protested, and I explained that polar bears live in the Arctic Ocean. And while there are various species of penguin, none of them live in the Northern Hemisphere. This was an open argument during class, and she offered to Google the answer, so she did. And I was proven correct. She sent me out of the class. Story 20. I was a metalhead with long hair. In the ninth grade, my algebra teacher, who was working on his third DUI, told me that I would OD before I ever graduated. I sent him an invite to my graduation. I mentioned how I hadn't OD'd. He no-showed. But one of my other teachers came. He told me what a jerk that guy was and that he would be sure to ask him why he couldn't make it, just to rub it in a little. Who? Boy was projecting. Like, seriously, that teacher probably had substance abuse issues himself, DUIs, and just figured that, I don't know, any misbehaving kid must also. Either way, bad behavior from a teacher, for sure. But I do genuinely hope he gets his own issues sorted out still. Story 21. When I was in sixth grade, the second election for Bush Jr. was coming around, and they were teaching us about political parties, and being a kid, I asked which political party I belonged to, because as a kid with no prior knowledge, I wanted to know if I had one. My teacher then proceeded to tell the class that everyone is and must be a Republican, or they will burn in the fiery pits of hell with the dirty no morals having Democrats. Turns out you don't go to hell for not being a Republican. Story 22. I'm a teacher's aide. A student said to me last week that I'm like his dad, never around to help, and when I am, I'm useless. I responded with, you're making me realize why he left. Disclaimer, I have a good relationship with this student, and this kind of humor is appreciated by him. Story 23. My theater teacher in high school told me I was too fat to act unless I played the fat idiot sidekick, and that I wouldn't be in a musical, and I would never make it into the world of theater. 
About a year later, her husband cast me in a musical and one other show because he really liked me. Story 24. All of her comments for the four years I was in high school really screwed with me. It made me rethink wanting to do theater, which is one of my only passions. I'm glad I stuck with it, though, and continued on through my senior year, even though she was still awful to me. Story 24. I had a teacher stand me up in front of the class and have them say, stupid, in unison. That really did a lot for my fifth grade self-esteem, especially considering my dad was in rehab at the time. And the reason I was called stupid was I lost my homework at said rehab. Visiting him. Joke's on her, though. I'm an accomplished scientist today. Despite that terrible chain of events. Story 25. I was a bit of a problem child growing up because I would rather read, write, or draw than do academic things. Didn't help I studied in an Indian school and that our education system places emphasis on rote memorization over practical understanding. So I had a bit of a reputation with the teachers. The moral science teacher got sick and the head teacher subbed in for her once. I'd had my run-ins with her, so I was a bit wary to begin with. Moral science was a silly subject in the first place. But that day we were talking about imagination, so I was super hyped. At some point during the class, she asked us something along the lines of, who here visualizes when they read? And I eagerly stuck my hand in the air. My moment to shine, right? Wrong. All I got was a look of condescension and a, really? You? In front of the whole class. I was absolutely crushed for a day or two, but I got over it pretty quickly, I think. But it stuck in my mind as a particularly mean thing to do for no real reason. Oh well, story 26. Your son is slow, that's a quote from Mrs. George to my mom right in front of me. Screw you, female dog. I'm no genius, but I'm by no means unintelligent. Turns out, you were a lazy piece of crap, unworthy of the title of teacher. Lucky for me, another teacher was your total opposite. That woman was an angel. Wherever you are, I love you. You are a fantastic teacher and a fantastic person. Story 27. By far the worst thing was what my sixth grade teacher screamed at us. We'd been doing something kids do, probably talking, and she went off at a class of 30 12-year-olds screaming, I hope you all get your head splashed in at high school. Nine out of 10, great teacher, story 28. My history of art teacher is an old man ready to be retired, but can't because there's no one who could replace him. Anyway, he's pretty strict, but sometimes likes to joke around. I sit in the first row, and one day he was talking about some painting, stops mid-sentence, looks at me for a solid 10 seconds, and goes, Opie, your lips are very red, just like strawberry. I wanted to die while everyone laughed. My classmates even joked he had a crush on me. Eat it, I wanted to clear some things up. I'm in high school, and I'm a girl. Many of my teachers used to comment on my hair, lipstick, and makeup in general, my outfits, etc. But none of them made comments in overly creepy voices while looking at me like they wanted to eat me. It creeped the hell out of me. Pointing out a few things as well. One, he wasn't referring to my lipstick, but my natural lip color. Why me out of the 20 other girls, I don't know. And two, my other teachers don't make comments that come off as rude or creepy. Usually my female teachers like to talk about makeup, so they give me comments like, testing out new makeup, OP? I really like that eyeshadow, or something like that. My male teachers usually comment on something more visible, like hair or t-shirt. None of them creepy. I wouldn't mind if he complimented my lipstick, but he complimented my natural lips and it was creepy as hell. <laughs> Story 29. My brother abused me as a child. It started around third or fourth grade. And when I was in fourth grade, he held a pocket knife my dad had given him up to my neck. I told my class about it because I was scared. My teacher took me to the hallway and told me, don't say those things or you'll be taken away from your family. I never mentioned the abuse to anyone again until seventh grade because of the warning this teacher gave me. It only got worse after that, too. Story 30. She wasn't my teacher, luckily, but in high school, a religion teacher openly talked about how she thought homosexuality is worse than pedophilia. This was to a bunch of kids aged 16 and in a very secular country. Needless to say, no one showed any respect to that teacher anymore, yet she still teaches. Story 31. My design and technology teacher really resented that I had very little interest in her subject. She asked me what I wanted to do when I left school. I told her I was going to do something with music. I was in all the school bands, orchestras, choirs, etc., and played piano at a grade 8 level. She told me to be successful at that. 
someone had to either be extremely talented or very hardworking, and that I was neither. All right, so anyone else think this teacher had dreams of making it big and couldn't? Because that's the vibe I get. It's not even like OP said they wanted to be a huge star. They just wanted to be in the field of music, which is extremely feasible for someone who dedicates themselves to it. What a terrible, terrible thing to say to a student. Story 32. I had a tax teacher in college point out the kid who was bound to a wheelchair and had an aide who would take notes for him and say that he wouldn't get far in life because of his disability, and that was just the way his life would be. And the teacher knew this because his, quote, mother was also bound to a wheelchair as well. This made me so angry. Sure, he's going to have a tough time, but no teacher has the right to tell a student what they can and can't accomplish in life. That teacher was a jerk. I told our coordinator and wrote it on our end of year evaluations. I'm not sure if he returned, to be honest. Story 33. Chemistry teacher earlier this year. Congratulations. You are a forest of idiots. I honestly don't understand how any of you are still in my class. Just drop and take AG Chem or Physics like the morons you are. She single-handedly insulted the entire junior class in five seconds. She is, without a doubt, the worst person I've ever had to deal with, and somehow still isn't fired. What kind of burn does she think take physics like the morons you are is? I don't think physics is generally regarded as easy, is it? Sure, it's a different kind of thinking than a lot of the chemistry, but it's just that, it's just different. It's not easier. This teacher has a weird ego, story 34. What the teacher said wasn't horrible until we learned more a couple of weeks later. My ninth grade science teacher was talking about molecular bonds or something, and as an example, called a girl up in front of the class, saying she was one atom and he was another, and they were attracted to each other, and if they were married, they would form a new molecule. The girl he called up looked super uncomfortable, but at the time seemed harmless. Turns out they were having an affair, and he kept telling her that he was going to leave his wife for her. She was 15 when he didn't and tried to break it off with her a couple of weeks later. She went and told on him. After that, he ended up in prison for a couple of years. Story 35. When I was in eighth grade, one of the boys snapped the bra of one of the girls. That led to a day without normal classes. Boys and girls were separated, and the teachers talked to us about intimacy growing up and relations. Three women teachers and one man teacher talked to the boys. Near the end of the day, the man said, you boys have to learn restraint. When you see Riley Johnson bend over, you can't stare. Believe me, I know how hard it is not to stare. When Riley bends over, I feel a stern in my pants too. She really gets your blood pumping, I know. She really is a hot little thing, isn't she? By this point, he was looking into the air, addressing himself. But we have to stay focused. We cannot waste our lives with fantasies of all the other things we can do to that young body. The women teachers were staring at him wide-eyed. He turned red and shut up. I thought it was weird then. At 13, now I realized the man was a closet kid toucher. Edit, he was never punished. It was never mentioned again that I heard a... I don't even know if you can cause him a closet kid toucher after that. Come on, how could you ever even, eh? The whole time I was just hoping, praying, that this was at least an adult. Then it's just creepy and bad. Not like horrific, horrific, but no, disgusting. Story 36. Wasn't so much what he said, but what he did. It required him to say things that I only realized in retrospect were more messed up than it seemed at the time. And it's not like it wasn't terrible in the first place. 60-something white-haired supply teacher, weird vibe about him, realized he had a split in the crotch of his trousers, sends one of the girls from the class to home economics to get a needle and thread. When she gets back, he takes off his trousers, so he sat there in his underpants and shirt tail, hands the trousers to the same girl, and tells her to start stitching them. We were all pretty young kids, so she complies. She looks mortified, none of us knew what to do. I forgot to mention, not only did he pick a girl for this, he picked the only black girl in the class. We didn't see him again after that day. I hope he got struck off the supply teacher's register. Like I said, I only realized the potential race connection later in life. The girl had been a classmate for years, so at the time, the thought didn't cross my mind. I didn't think she would be considered any different than me, a boy, or than any of the other girls. Story 37. In sixth grade, there was an Indian girl in our class, and she was getting teased because of the way she smelled. She didn't smell bad, just like Indian food, 
and our teacher did this thing where she would pull a student into the hall and talk to them, either about bullying or being bullied. Well, she took this girl into the hall and had one of her talks with her. The teacher then comes back in a class and tells us all that she had a talk with the girl and explained to her that maybe her family could eat more traditional food on the weekends and more American food during the week. I will never forget being 11 or 12 and thinking, is she crazy? I felt so bad for the girl. I told my mom about it when I got home that day. So my mom started packing me Syrian lunches. My mom was half Syrian and called the teacher and absolutely went off on her for it. The teacher then apologized to the class and the little girl. Story 38. Probably, probably the third grade teacher calling me by my hated nickname when I was in second grade. It didn't help my aunt found out and called me the same name too. And that's when I learned not to trust adults as a child. Story 39. I remember in like second grade Catholic school, learning about saints and the subject of martyrs came up. Someone asked, so if someone was going to murder you, unless you said you didn't believe in Jesus, you can't say it or else you'll go to hell. And my teacher was like, ah, oh, I guess. All we stuck with me is screwed up. But looking back now, she was probably just thinking, they don't pay me enough for this crap. Story 40, what I've always hated is when a teacher says something along the lines of, you'll end up getting a job at McDonald's or Walmart or Wendy's. What they don't realize is that just getting a job, especially if there's stigma against it, should earn respect. It's a thousand times better than collecting an unemployment check for years. Story 41, you can't get into heaven if you have tattoos. Halloween is devil worship. Insert early 2000s kids cartoon, which featured anything that vaguely resembled magic was witchcraft and therefore devil worship. If you don't follow my rules exactly, I'm going to make you repeat the grade. Should be noted we were six. At the time, huh? At the time? Sure, this was a Christian school, but no one else there was that freaking nuts. Especially not towards six-year-olds. Close second was a third grade teacher that attempted to teach us to question all science by giving a completely bullcrap explanation of evolution and saying things that amount to, look at all these silly scientists, thinking frogs turned into monkeys. I may be a Christian today, but holy crap, you do lay off the bull crap a little. Edit, just thought of another, not as bad, but still pretty bad. Eighth grade band teacher decides to give our class a last minute short song to learn before our yearly performance. No big deal, but I just happened to be out sick the day he announced it. Not only that, but he wanted us to practice it in our own time and never once mentioned this to me or even reminded the class to be practicing it. So the day before the performance, we go to do rehearsals. And he tells us to play that song. I speak up and say, I don't know it because he never mentioned it. And he straight up accused me of not paying attention. It's not my fault you told us to learn the song in our own time the day I was away. Not tell me and never mention it in class. He was otherwise a great guy and I'm still friends with his son, but holy crap. Does it still upset me to think about that one? Story 42. What are your plans for the future? I want to be a teacher. Hmm, aim lower. You'll never make it through university. You should just get married and start a family young or work in childcare. You're not teacher material. 15 years on, I'm a coordinator at my school in the office doing some admin work when the same teacher walks in. They're a sales rep for a bookseller. Me, taking the business card and seeing it's them. I thought I recognized you. You taught me year 12 maths at this school. Oh, I remember you. Working as a receptionist, I see. At least you're in a school. Actually, I'm a teacher here. Year level and subject coordinator. Ironically, maths coordinator. You're not teaching anymore? Oh, no. After your school, I left teaching. Nobody respected me. Kids made complaints against me totally unsubstantiated, and I got fired. Said I bullied them. You know I never bullied you kids. Actually, telling me I would never make it as a teacher is kind of bullying. Well, you're just a primary teacher, not a real one, is it? By now, my principal had walked out of her office and had been listening in on the conversation. Actually, OP is one of our most valued teachers, and one of the most qualified in her area. This place wouldn't function without her. And if this is how you speak to my staff, I'd appreciate it if you didn't return to our school again. And now, OP, I need your input on this. Are you free now? Took all my strength not to give them the finger 
and blow them a big fat raspberry. Principal and I had a big what the hell was their problem discussion. Ah, yes, the classic good teacher advice. Give up. Don't even try to achieve your dreams? Amazing. Story 43. Well, it wasn't a teacher per se, but it was the, the guidance counselor in high school. She asked me what I wanted to do for a career, and I told her that I wanted to be a chef. She literally said, and I quote, why don't you do something where you use your brain? I've been making a living as a chef for the last 20 years, and I don't subscribe to the everyone needs to go to college. Doctrine, story 44. In first grade, there was one boy in our class, Reggie, who lived in a van. Most of the kids knew about it because a counselor had come around to talk to the class after someone had teased him about not changing his clothes. The counselor did a great job explaining to us that now was the time in that he needed support and friendship. And so us kids were all pretty nice to him after that. Then, after winter break, we were all sitting around at sharing time, talking about what we got for Christmas. And Reggie said he got a Super Nintendo. We knew this probably wasn't true, but we went along with it so he wouldn't feel bad. The teacher called him out on it, saying, You've got a Nintendo in your van? Nobody likes a liar, Reggie. The kid just wilted. It was awful, and just the pure lack of compassion she showed has stuck in my memory for 20 of years. Story 45. I had a PE teacher in 10th grade who was an absolute jerk. For whatever reason, I think it's because I wasn't a popular kid, he had it out for me. I wasn't doing well in school that year or the one before. I was just starting to deal with social anxiety and depression. Naturally, the grades took a hit, and he made sure everyone knew about it. He told all of the other students in my class what my grades were right in front of me. I don't know if that's illegal, but I sure as crap wasn't happy about it. On top of that, he would always pick where I would play and the team games we'd play. Everyone else got to pick where they wanted to go, except for me. I was thrown in with the popular kids, then called out and marked down for not participating when they would ignore me. And then there was the time he locked me out of the gym on a cold, rainy day because I was late, and then told me I should have been there earlier, and that me freezing in the rain was a punishment for tardiness. He had also bet my class that I wouldn't show up a few times. I only caught on because another kid told me about it. When I was dealing with so much mentally, that crap didn't help. I eventually got fed up. I went to report him to the principal. I wanted him gone, but I didn't get very far with that. The principal told my mom that, uh, that I was a liar and that the teacher would never do anything like that because he's such a great guy and everyone loves him. Instead of attempting to deal with the problem, I was dropped from his class and earned no credit for the course that year. Story 46. In high school, I had a family emergency. Due to circumstances, I had to take care of two of my mentally handicapped family members for a week by myself. I went to explain the situation to my teacher, and what did she tell me? She said that I should either put them out of their misery or lock them in a room and not feed them. Another teacher even heard it and was appalled by her. I honestly never looked at my homeroom teacher the same, and I would always try to miss that class whenever I had the chance to. She was a mean teacher, and I really hope she rots in hell for some of the stuff she did to people. There's a lot of bad things in this thread, but this? Just straight up telling you that these family members you had don't deserve life. That you should actively end their lives. That's crazy. This teacher doesn't need to just get fired. I don't know what else. But fired isn't enough. They are a danger to society. Story 47. I had a teacher who was a Vietnam vet. He was talking about some anecdote from the war. And uh, a slur just slipped out of his mouth like nothing. We all just laughed since this was a couple of years before the whole PC culture thing started and there were no Asians in the class. But if he were to say it now, there would have probably been severe consequences. Sorry, 48. In Australia, huh? In high school, we had a Canadian teacher who taught us Australian students. He asked us about what kind of fauna you'd find in Australia. We said the usual, kangaroos, koalas, crocodiles, etc. He told us we were missing one, and we racked our brains trying to think of it until he blatantly said, Aboriginals. Seriously, this was only about 13 years ago. I really would have hoped that people were better than this. Like, Canada has a bad past when it comes to their indigenous population. As a Canadian, I know this. That is absolutely a fair criticism of the history of the country. It was bad. Like, bad, bad. But just 13 years ago, a teacher said this. Teaching abroad? 
not even about our own indigenous population, about theirs. Something about that makes it feel even worse. Either way, garbage human being. Story 49. When I was in junior high, I separated my patella, knee bone, from the muscles slash cartilage, doing the high jump, planted my foot, and rotated my body around it. Most painful experience I've ever had. Anyway, after surgery and recoup, and then managing to get a four-inch bolt jammed in the same knee from a boat trailer, more doctors and recoup, I finally get back to school. I hate how my new knee looked and wore jeans all the time. Our PE teacher was a total meathead. So if you didn't excel at sports, you were a wimp slash nerd. I hated sports since we had to wear shorts, so I just started to not bring them and sit out. One day we're walking back from the Oval, and he picks up a pair of shorts from Mud Puddle and holds them aloft and says, Look, it's OP. His shorts for his stupid white pasty legs that can't jump. This was said while looking directly at me, with the whole class stopped in a group with him holding their dripping muddy shorts. It isn't the worst thing said language-wise, <laughs> I suppose, but I was utterly crushed. I hated my leg at that time and was struggling like hell to accept it, and this jerk just stood there, staring at me with everyone just awkwardly silent. When we left that day, he kicked my bag out onto the grass and said something directed at me, but I can't remember what. But happy ending time. My dad had been a teacher at this school many, many years ago in one other local high school woodwork slash metalwork and technical drawing. He now, at this stage in the early 80s, was the head of one of the sections of the education department and came up with a lot of the yearly programs Australia-wide for these subjects. Dad found out what happened to me via one of my friends, of which I found out later, and that teacher never spoke to me again. And in two weeks, we never saw him again. I never asked, but I knew Dad had been down to the school. I wish I would have found out before Dad passed. That was the best time he ever had my back. Story 50. In a whole year assembly of about 200 people, our head of year basically said that all Germans were Nazis if they didn't directly stand up against the Nazis. Never mind that doing so likely meant you and your family got shot or sent to concentration camps. I can't remember what point he was trying to make. I just remember thinking what an idiot he was. On a lighter note, not a bad thing to say, but horribly worded, my female French teacher once said, now you've experienced how I'll be performing all on you. Friends and I were crying for five straight minutes while she stared at us, totally bemused, not realizing what she'd said. Story 51. As an autistic that's been hated by almost every teacher for all the wrong reasons, I've heard plenty. This ranges from slightly personal to straight-up degrading. I've been called stupid, arrogant, hopeless, useless, and much worse. These might not sound as bad, but with my history of social issues and bullying, they all tie together to a long chain of hatred. Because of my ASD, I struggle to interpret directions and tasks the right way, which has impacted me all throughout school. Some teachers, yeah, more than two, actually told me I was imagining things, and I just needed to admit I was stupid instead of blaming it on a disease. Another teacher told me that ASD and the whole spectrum was synonymous with stupidity, and that I would never make it anywhere. Another example of how almost every teacher treated me my exam hadn't gone as well as I expected, and I went up to my teacher after class and asked him what I could have done better, what areas I especially needed to improve on. He doesn't look at me, just says, you suck, and walks away. No eye contact, not a single word, just walk. He is the most popular teacher in school, and nobody ever notices him saying these things to me. Funny story, he leads the anti-discrimination program at our school. Story 52. When I was in eighth grade, we had a new teacher, I don't remember her name, but we called her Drawer Woman, because whenever she talked, her jaw did this motion that resembled a drawer opening and closing. I was always a good student and never made trouble in her class, but there was just something I didn't like about that woman. Somewhere around the middle of eighth grade, I started wearing contact lenses for the first time, and my doctor told me to carry these special drops with me in case my eyes ever got dry. One time during her class, my eyes got really dry. I asked her if I could go to the bathroom to put the drops in my eyes. She put on this upset face, said I was lying because she was a medical professional, and that she, quote, knows you don't need them. She then took my eye drops and only gave them back to me after class. A few weeks after that, I was late for school, so I wasn't very careful when putting on my contacts that morning. On my way to school, I could feel some kind of pain in my left eye. 
While I was in her class again, I noticed I couldn't see well through my left eye, and then it hit me. The lens strayed away and got stuck on the side of my eye. I couldn't get the lens out, so I started panicking and crying. I asked her if I could go home, and she started to yell at me, fine, get out of my class. That was the first time someone threw me out of their class. Screw that female dog. If I never see her again, it'll be too soon. Story 53, old physics teacher. He told this great story about what he said to his student. He had Asperger's and would tell us great stories all the time. He had just bought a new to him secondhand car. Ha <laughs> ha, why did you buy that ugly old car? But well, what car does your mom have? Student goes quiet. Other student, a uh, sir? His mom died last week. Story 54, my second grade teacher. If you continue writing with your left hand, you're gonna sit out in the hall until you stop. Spent the rest of the year doing workbooks in the hallway. My fifth grade teacher standing me up in front of the class after I, I was unable to finish my workbook because I was stuck. Can I have a round of applause for her failure? My sophomore year history teacher after taking a pair of scissors to the notebook I'd been doodling in in between taking notes. Your art is crap. You are crap. You will amount to nothing in life. My high school counselor after I told her I'd been assaulted by several upperclassmen. Oh, come on. We all know you've always been asking for it. We all know you're just regretting and crying assault so your dad doesn't ground you. Don't worry, I'll keep it between us girls. Edit. I just remembered a very traumatic time that my fifth grade teacher made me panic in class so hard I hyperventilated on the floor. So I was the new kid that year, so it was already tough. But about halfway through the year, they separated the entire grade into boys and girls and gave everyone the whole special things are gonna happen to your body talk. I was a timid as hell kid, and being the new kid really elevated that to an extreme level. So when I asked my teacher, wait, what's going to happen to my body? And the answer was something special and private. Naturally, I got really scared because no matter how many times I would ask, no one would tell me. It got to the point where my teacher blew up on me and told me to shut up and stop asking stupid questions, which in turn made me start sobbing my eyes out because I was so scared. Ten and scared and confused. Teacher sent me to the principal's office with a note that said, being unruly and disruptive to the class, which made me cry harder. Then broke down completely when the principal said she was going to call my mom and I was going to be in trouble if I didn't stop. So she called my mom, dragged her out of work, and was explained to why I was sitting there, crying so hard I puked in the trash can as soon as she walked in. I think my mother said something to the degree of, are you freaking stupid? To the principal, and knelt down to me and told me, when you start going through puberty, you're going to grow body hair, and you're going to start bleeding from your genitals, and that's okay. And I remember the biggest relief thinking, oh, that's not bad. The principal then proceeded to yell at my mother, apparently offended as hell, that my mom would say something like that to me. See, my school district was one of those abstinence-only districts, and many, many of the teachers support that education. Don't they? I'm just glad my mom was a no bull crap for those types of things. She wishes she could have been there more for me when I was young, but a single mother can only do so much. Yes, because it wouldn't be distressing at all as a child to be asking what's happening to me and to get no answer. That's fun. That's cool. Story 55. I don't remember what started this story, but in middle school, one of our teachers, Mary, told us about an old boyfriend she had. Apparently, he was a really nice guy, but they broke up due to distance. She remarked something along the lines of, looking back, that's a dumb reason to break up. Then someone asks, if you could go back, would you stay together and marry him? Oh, yeah, definitely. Cue an awkward silence in the classroom. Finally, someone asks, what's on everyone's minds? But what about your son? Oh, 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 yeah. oh no, we could always have another Liam. Extremely awkward, since she just discreetly admitted to a bunch of 12-year-olds that she apparently isn't attached or deeply in love with her current husband or son, the latter who she'd be fine with replacing for another kid of the same name. Story 56. I have two. I lived in a town of 250 people, and there wasn't much of a selection when it came to teachers. We saw a lot of interesting characters. The one story that actually regards a direct interaction between me and a teacher is this. I had a chemistry teacher who was famous for telling stories rather than teaching. Get him talking about his youth in the lab, 
entire class period gone. It was nice from time to time, but me being the nerd I was, started to get annoyed as I was entirely teaching myself the material out of the book. It was another story time day in period two, and I was, well, sick of it. He had been telling a story about him and his college roommate sneaking a bunch of girls into the lab overnight, heavily implying exactly what you would expect, much to the delight of the 15-year-old boys. I raised my hand and expressed my discomfort at the subject matter and in intimate overtones and asked to be dismissed. As I'm walking out of the room, I hear him turn to a group of boys and say, female dogs, they're all like this at that age. I had never felt so disrespected and attacked by a figure of authority at a school before. Completely inappropriate all around. It's not such a shock that he's since been fired. Unfortunately, not for anything related to his competency or dealing with students. Also once watched in awe with my class as we were running the mile. And my eighth grade teacher called out to a heavy boy who had fallen far behind and started to cry out of exhaustion and embarrassment. My teacher yelled, hurry it up, fatty. He was let go that year because of that incident, if I remember correctly. It also didn't help that he was about 25 and one of those creepy rubs the girl's shoulders during quiet work times teachers. Story 57. Back in my middle school age, I had a crazy English teacher and she used to say a lot of weird things. So many that we stopped bothering about that after a while. But one day, out of nowhere, she started talking about the events of 9-11, claiming she was the one behind it, going around in class, screaming in the faces of everyone that she planned it all. Then, as if nothing happened, she stopped screaming and started to talk normally again. Not sure if this classifies as the worst thing ever said, but it was certainly weird and scary. 100% serious. That teacher needs psychiatric help. Yesterday. That is clearly some sort of psychotic break, right? I feel like some antipsychotics and some therapy could probably do her good. Story 58. I was really young, the age where you're learning to write better and actually do sums. Um. Extra one of the tasks that was in the school workbook was to write down the days of the week. This was the last page of the workbook, so I was pretty happy that I'd nearly finished it before anyone else. I fill in the days and proudly walk to the teacher's desk to get it marked. She said I spelled Wednesday wrong, so I popped back to my desk and looked it up. Luckily, luckily we had the days of the week listed as a display on the wall, and I noticed I'd spelled it correctly. But hey, teacher can't be wrong. So I erased what I'd written, copied it letter for letter from the wall, <laughs> back up to the teacher's desk, wrong again. I asked what was wrong with it, and she said, listen how it's pronounced. Wednesday, not Wednesday. I ended up just sitting at my desk, not knowing what to do until the bell rang. I had the right answer, but she told me it was wrong. Thinking back, clearly the teacher didn't know that Wednesday had a D in it. This has been a source of confusion 30 years. Obviously, at the time, I didn't speak up, because if a teacher was telling me I wasn't doing it right, I clearly wasn't. And I must have been, I don't know, five or six, maybe. I think that's also one of my earliest memories. Story 59. One of my high school teachers told us a story about one of his first job interviews after college. Starting out, he was looking for an elementary job, and one of the first questions on the interview was, one of the students misbehaves on the regular. How do you discipline them? His reply, I'd log a little bugger in a rabbit cage while the other little buggers watched so they don't get any ideas. He said just the confused and disturbed stares he got were incredible. <laughs> Nobody laughed, which was his intention. Probably one of the best teachers I had in school, but the guy had a dark sense of humor. And he would say something like that as a joke. Story 60. My fifth grade teacher basically tried to turn me into a school shooter, so where do I start? I hope he doesn't come back. After leaving me behind by myself on a walk and making me run in the summer heat with my asthma. What are you going to do? Stab me with this pencil and then stab everyone else with it? Do it. You'd solve your problems that way. As I was having an emotional breakdown in class, while she was getting my classmates to bully me, she even put the pencil next to my hand. He's a violent child, and I think I know where he gets it from. She said to my mom as she was picking me up from school because I get bullied on my walk home. I still freaking hate that monster of a woman. 
Regardless of everything else in the entire world, if you're picking this much beef with a single child, you got a problem. This is someone who's been on the earth for like, I don't know, 10 years? What's wrong with you? Story 61. Ireland, 1983, third class, boys' school. Three boys from my clam class, including me, hadn't done our Irish language homework. The punishment? Go over to the second class classroom. Tell the teacher we'd been sent for punishment. He made us tie our school jumpers in front of our waist to look like skirts, stand up on his desk and say, I am a girl in Irish, while the second class boys laughed in delight. Some punishment. I'm now a linguist specializing in German. Breaks my heart that the wonderful Irish language was so poisoned by screwed up child-hating teachers. By the way, this was in Our Lady of Good Counsel Boys School, Johnstown. Story 62. Told this story once before, but it's relevant here. I went to a Church of England primary school, kind of middle of the road Protestant, for those who need a frame of reference. When I was in my second year, aged five or six, there was a huge thunderstorm in the middle of the afternoon at the edge of our playground. There was a huge tree, really tall, and it was struck by lightning. Obviously, as a class of 30 children aged five to six, we were all safe, but terrified beyond belief. Our teacher and an older woman had us sit on the floor in front of her chair as she did every day before reading us a story. I've never forgotten what she said. Now, children, what have you done? God is angry with you. Half the class erupted into fresh tears, besides themselves with fear. But I remember looking at her and thinking, this isn't right. And 22 years later, I'm still pretty angry about it. Story 63. When I was in the fourth grade, I lost my lines I was supposed to recite for a choir concert. I told my choir teacher, and she said, well, you should have been more responsible, and she just walked away. Not an awful thing to say, really, but rather rude. So, come concert time, my solo was coming up. I walked up to the mic and said, I don't know what to say, because the teacher wouldn't give me the words, even when I asked for them, and walked away. There was a stunned silence, and then a small commotion. I was taken off stage by the principal who asked me why I would even say that. To which I responded the truth, because she wouldn't give me the lines even after I told her I lost them. He just looked a little shocked and said, okay, and I went on my way. Story 64. My third grade teacher was a massive idiot. My mom is English, so I grew up saying mom instead of mom. Sometimes I would spell color as color with a U because that was what I was taught. It had literally never been a problem up until third grade because everyone knew I had English family and Teachers meet your parents pretty frequently in elementary school. But in third grade, oh boy. My teacher would make fun of me and correct me if I said mom. I would lose points if I used mom instead of mom on an assignment. She would single me out in class and ask why I continued to say it wrong. For some reason, this female dog hated the word mom. One day I even brought an assignment home and showed it to my parents and my mom got involved being like, my kid says mum because I'm English, and he learned it from me. Also, we're in Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Mum is incredibly common here because of the huge Irish and English population. It's not like I'm in Alabama where they've never seen a goddamn English person before. Hell, I knew kids with American parents who said mum. Like, why did this female dog hate me so much? Story 65. There's a lot of teacher hate here, which sounds earned. I live at a boarding school where my husband works. He teaches, coaches, drives kids around, parents kids, and genuinely loves them. We talk about how best to help kids over dinner and even at social gatherings. He works all the time, often 12 to 14 hours a day, and makes less than 35,000 a year. I just want to remind people that good teachers exist. I'm sorry you've had such bad ones. Help your kids or neighbors find the right ones. Story 66. You will never be anything in life. I have a multi-million dollar house, a great wife, four lovely children, own a clinic, have an MD, ophthalmology, PhD, biochem, and a master's in business. All of my degrees were funded by grants and scholarships. Screw you, Mrs. Smith, I ended up richer than you. I hope you rot in a hole. Even though this is a known on Mrs. Smith, sure, always rubs me the wrong way when people say I'm richer than you is a sort of like, I got you. I'm not saying she was a good teacher, but if someone's passion in life is to be a teacher, yeah, they're going to make less money than you. Don't blame them. Blame society. Like what? It's just a really, I don't know, 
meaningless burn. But some people treat it as like the worst thing you can say to someone. So weird. Story 67. You are all here because your families can't afford private schools. A high school English teacher said that to the entire class. We were in public school, obviously. This was an honors English class in what was an okay high school at the time, which did offer excellent honors programs that led to college credits. The class was especially well-behaved among classes in the grade. There was no reason for him to bring up the financial background of anyone, period. You don't shame students for their lot in life. Story 68. We were painting in class. I was about nine, so fairly young. We were painting a fruit bowl. I'm colorblind, and I painted my oranges green as, to me, that was right. A girl in my class told on me. And the teacher came over, looked at my painting, held it up, and showed everyone what I had done wrong. And all the kids laughed. I went home, and my mom was asking what was wrong. My friend who was coming over told my mom, and my mom went mental. She and my dad wrote an amazing letter, sent it to the head. The teacher had to make an apology to me in front of the entire class and the head. Stupid teacher. Story 69. My third grade teacher was giving an end of the year pep talk to our whole class. And at the end, she concluded with, I know everyone will succeed in life, no matter where they go. Except for OP and David, I currently pick up trash and clean streets for a living. A living that doesn't allow me enough money to pay my bills. I'm so far behind my peers and filled with self-hatred. The adults in my life as a kid completely failed to instill any type of self-regard or allow me to develop any self-esteem. I'm not sure how to break out of it either. I've tried, I just can't seem to. I would like to believe I deserve everything I want and have enough self-regard to pursue it. I would like to succeed, but so far it seems like she was right. Not sure what David's doing, but man, I hope he's living high on the hog. Yet another example of a self-fulfilling prophecy. That teacher wasn't right in saying that. In fact, in saying that, the teacher reinforced a path that led OP to where the teacher thought they would be in life. And also, for the record, picking up trash and cleaning streets isn't a bad living. Like, yeah, it doesn't make you enough. But once again, a thing that needs to be done. So OP, thank you. I value your work. But if you do have any higher aspirations, I would encourage you to go for them. At least give it a try. And yeah, I know it's not that easy, but stuff like that is still a hell of a lot better than everyone will succeed except for exactly you. And story 70, strong force equals God. Chemistry class. <laughs> High school. Hmm, me. Does anyone know what causes the strong force? The teacher. <laughs> I can't answer that in a public school, but I'm sure you could ask Laura and she could give you an answer. Laura was an extremely religious girl in my grade, so he knew he wasn't allowed to say it. But apparently the strong force is just Jesus keeping it all together. I live in southeastern United States. Story 71. So many negative stories about teachers, I'm going to go full anarchist and tell a positive one. When I was in middle school, I was really skinny and weak. Haven't changed much since. We were in a group talking in a history class when a jock walked up to me and said, Hey, I heard you could only bench 50 pounds yesterday, with a smirk on his face. My heart sunk as I realized that this incident was being passed around school and laughed at. However, the guy was an idiot because he said this near our teacher. Without missing a beat, she said to him in a very loud, annoyed voice, What difference does it make? How much you can bench? Why do you care? There was basically silence, and everyone turned to look at him. He just kind of shrugged and slunk away back to his desk, embarrassed without saying a word. Everyone went back to talking as if it were no big deal, but to me, it was a big deal. I thought about it and realized she was right. It didn't matter how much I could bench. I always remembered it and appreciated her for sticking up for me. Her name was Mrs. Gilliam. Overall, I actually liked most of my teachers in school. Just wanted to post this to balance out some negativity. Story 72. In sixth grade, 95, 96. I had a teacher who was a sadist. She was one of the cruelest humans to ever walk the earth. If we were allowed, she would pick up steel folding chairs and throw them. I don't know how she kept her job. She had to be late 60s, early 70s. Anyway, there was a new kid that year, Jimmy. He came to our school because he was bullied pretty bad the city over. For whatever reason, she just reeled this kid over everything. One time we were told to bring in wool to rub on balloons, static electricity. He didn't have any. She said, are you that poor that you can't afford gloves? 
Around Christmas, we were selling candy bars to raise money for a trip. Apparently, Jimmy's mom spent it, maybe on bills, partying, or whatever. But what she did to this kid was horrible. It wasn't what she said, it was what she did. She would march him in front of class every single day and make him apologize to each of us. Then, she would ask each of us how it affected us. Some kids got really into it, I think maybe three of us that didn't. She did a million small things and broke the kid. Jimmy Larkin hung himself from the monkey bars on singing Patty's Day 96. I'll never forget the crocodile tears this idiot showed. I hope she rots in hell. Ms. Lucy in Everett, Massachusetts. Story 7 to you. I'm really late here, but I was pretty chubby in junior high, and it was a tough time for me. Much harder than high school, in my opinion. I didn't really fit in with the crowd. My dad didn't make as much as the other kids' dads and all. And again, I was pretty portly. I'm much fitter now. One day, this female dog teacher comes into class, puts her cold hands on my neck to warm them, and loudly tells the whole class, fat people retain more heat, or something to that effect. I'll never forget it. Screw her. Story 74. My history teacher in Form 4 used to make us sit in the order of the person who got the lowest to the people who got the highest marks on tests. The people who got the lowest marks sat in the front, and the ones with the highest sat all the way in the back. So there was this one time, nearly everyone failed the test, so he got really mad, called us all idiots, and the worst class he had ever taught in his life. It was actually quite funny for me, because he was so mad he was jumping around all red in the face. I thought steam was going to start blowing out of his ears. Story 75. I have a teacher born for this thread. He repeatedly told my class we all needed to die in a fiery hole. He told his senior class to end their lives because they were so stupid. He went to the cafeteria, got a cup of ice, then threw it all on a student. He did this three times to the same person. He repeatedly punished kids for being shy. I'm not shy, I just didn't like the people in my class, or him. Regardless, he wrote me up for not talking, then gave me zeros on some minor grades because I didn't talk much in his class. For some reason, he assumed that I, in particular, was going to be a complete failure, and also thought I wasn't very, quote, right in the head, and told me repeatedly. He made fun of two of the three girls in my class constantly, making them less confident in themselves for no apparent reason other than, why not? They didn't talk much in there, despite being extremely social outside, and this is just what I can recall. He taught classes from 8th to 12th grade, and from what I know, he treated the older classes worse than my 8th and later 9th grade class. Despite this, he was still the best math teacher my school has ever had. Also, even though he did the things listed and more, he got fired over a joke about seed and mayonnaise. What was the administration of the school doing here? Like, oh yeah, telling a class of students to end their own lives? That's fine. Hold on, is that, is that a reproductive function? Get him out of here, story 76. This still blows my mind. When I was in kindergarten, I was five, five. I saw an abandoned bracelet on a windowsill. Being, you know, five, I grabbed it because I was in the mindset of, if it's laying alone and you find it, it's yours. My teacher saw me and accused me of stealing it. I told her, no, it's mine since I found it. A few days ago, a police officer had visited my school and talked about what happens to criminals. She knew he had scared me, so her response was, I'm going to call that officer and tell him you stole something and lied about it. He's going to come pepper spray you until you confess. That female dog instilled a fear of cops in me for years. I never told my parents what happened until later because I was afraid they were also going to have me pepper sprayed. Story 77. Back when the clothing craze was long, baggy, white t-shirts, I went to a predominantly black school. And we had a teacher, Teacher A, coming to talk to my teacher, Teacher B, one morning before class. Teacher A said something along the lines of, I wish we could round up everyone in a white shirt in the cafeteria and blow it up. Teacher B sort of blew her off, then commented that she was insane after Teacher A had left. A few months later, Teacher A was fired for popping pills and then dropping the N-word to a kid in her class. Not surprising after what I had witnessed. I was in her class for a semester and she was always loopy and out of it. Okay, yeah, um... Bomb threats for a school don't often come from, uh, the teachers? But sure, why not? Thanks for watching. If you like this video,
give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. You can check out this video on your screen in the meantime, and I will see you in the next one.